But never I say my pen dream TV. Pen dream TV there. I see them. Yopo. I'm going to add a pen dream TV. So make sure say any day they can watch it. Best subscribe to your channel. I'm clicking by the social media. The news to house on subject. I'm going to what he. Here TUC from Trade Union Congress. And now my petition is buying say here tax I would have to. You see, just so no, when you increase on your sample trade, you know, so now, since you mean that, and now good morning, Ghana. So, Doctor Randy Abi, and the massive is proud, and the MPP complicated for entitled global. The way to one more any any answer, get to a crowd, chairman. Eh, say I buy it here. Eh, it is using some of the other guys' answer. Omo ane promises, omo bano, omo be yi new syntax. If you want to add an affi de ECG. Or to tuna still a fee I see almost had the tax at the can you see the one month for a bebre or bra already input a year prepaid a so your own home problems be bring normal so we normally tag a can you see your name has sent it to a pro studio inside a video no I'm a person ever called your call up here Dr. Randy Abbey because he brought any titles but a debate he was answering I follow, I followed mm. it. In fact, you recall that when we came to office from mm. 2017 2018, there were a couple of taxes that were redrawn by the central government. About 15 different or 70 different taxes because we saw that those taxes are really impeding on, on productivity. So that were redrawn. But currently, as we find ourselves, we don't have any means of raising money uh, from, 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 from abroad because of the challenge in which we find ourselves. Therefore, well, there's a need for us to look around and see where we can get, you know, additional funding. Because the demand on government, on, on social services, are enormous. Everybody's talking about roads. He's talking about uh, uh, electricity generation, talking about schools, hospitals, so many things. And you all depend on the central pool, what the SJK is going to provide. So where are we going to get all these monies from? So I think that he's on that spirit that government had wanted to go and increase from the ECG one. So if this is becoming a challenge, the best thing to do is to sit with them. Look, back in my place in Vaco, when I zoom office, the tension between management and workers was up there. So what did I do? Quickly, I have to engage. That's where I came from. So the best thing I could do was that, look, let's sit down with my people. The company you find yourself now is not like the days when Americans were here. When we were just giving out goodies here and there. We have to struggle to get something to the table, then we can share it. So please, I'm pleading with you. And I charge my HR director, I said, look, all the articles that I've brought before us as management, I'm charging you. Go and meet them informally. Look, this one, we can do something small about it. This one, we cannot do something. You know, can you also move quietly and come here? In every negotiations, undertake. There is no winner, there is no loser. It's a win-win. So when we did all this with the support of my board, and I think we only met for less than 12 hours. Like two hours. We just signed a collective agreement. And it went on peacefully. It is because you are recognizing the role. Because you understand leader. the space. You understand? Mm -hmm. you, you appreciate the work of, of the unions. They are partners. They are social partners. So clearly what we need to understand is that, look, this is a sensitive issue that we want to discuss. For me, as a young politician, what we could have done by the finance ministry is to meet the labor unions. Look, colleagues, this is what we have. And we all know the same we find ourselves. Please, we need your support. I don't think that Dr. Ba or any of the national unions, Mogai uh, 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 Ayamuni and the other national unions, would say, no, we will not do anything. At least they'll be able to give us some, some opportunity. Mm. So it's still not lost. I still believe that the finance ministry should take a move. And it, move it, looks like, uh, it looks like what Dr. Bamiya referred to mm -hmm. is actually what is happening to, to government. He says that, and I'm paraphrasing, when you run the economy into a hole like that, everything sounds nice to you. He was wondering how anybody would even think of imposing um, VAT on financial services and how anybody can want to tax, put 1% tax on investment. As we speak today, the VAT proposal is on insurance. 
the insurance that you go and pay for your car, whether it's third party or comprehensive, your property, if it's commercial or it's whatever, you want to go and take insurance for burglary and fire and all those things. The directive at the ministry is that put VAT on those ones. Anati, I've explained to you that the challenge we are finding now is that the capital market is closed. Mm. So what do we do? How do we raise the revenue? The demands of our people to fix roads, the demands of our people to get hospitals, goods and services, even government compensation is becoming a problem. So, so, so in, 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 in other words, it is very difficult to raise revenue. So what do we do? Panikwata, that's just one way of looking at it. So, that's so, one so, way so of looking at it because you see, when, so, so when you are... You need to look around and see where you can tap. Yeah, like but but the, here, the, 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 the challenge here yes. is, a, is a communication gap. Not just not I, just I, communication. I would have loved not just, that the not, finance ministry yes. would have met a little bit. Not just communication. But that's, that's a key thing. Not just yeah. communication. I'm saying okay. that if the obsession is with raising revenue. But you see when Dr. Bamia was speaking, he was also talking about the repercussions. I don't I understand. Uh -huh. And I understand. that's what people are not looking at. So for example, have you looked at, let's say the Ghanaian worker, the pensioner, the raft of taxes that has been imposed even in the last, let's say, three years or so, how they will be able to deal with those things. And what the implications of now putting VAT you, you automatically are increasing the electricity bills by 22%, 21.9%. And this is separate from the quarterly adjustments. Anytime the tariff is adjusted, the VAT will increase the electricity tariff by about 22%. Obviously, economic management must also allow you to also look at the implications of these persons and their businesses and everything and ask yourself whether they can contain all of this. You can't just be obsessed with, oh, if we apply this, Anete, looking at the consumption patterns, Anete, we expect to raise why. I understand the heat you are coming up with. I appreciate it because you only speak for the viewers. No, myself no, too. No, no, no. I'm coming, I'm coming, please. Mm -hmm. In as much as you are speaking for the viewers, mm -hmm. you're also speaking for yourself because mm -hmm. when every quarter is increased, the VAT is still there. Mm -hmm. It's going to affect it. Mm -hmm. And the pocket as well. Mm -hmm. And that is why I'm saying that. You, 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 when you make your argument so forceful like this, you forget the angle in which we find ourselves situation now. No, I don't. Because, because we, we don't have any other means of raising money apart from getting it internally. Mm -hmm. So if the approach to raise this money is becoming a problem, it means that we need to fall back and look at what other methods that we need to do. Does it mean we need to reduce it? Which is fair. And when you reduce as well, the expected revenue you need to do to carry on with these projects is also not going to be successful. What about decreasing expenditure? You're fine. For, for, for some time, you, can't do, you see, you can't do everything. Of you, course. You speak about, oh, you are less pressure, less pressure. But you can't do everything. I know you cannot do everything. Yes. Because so in you prioritize homes. them. Yes. You prioritize them. Yes. So that is why they took the matter to the parliament. And the parliament, MPs, they look at it. Mm -hmm. And they've approved it. Mm -hmm. So having approved, the appropriation passed. How do you raise the revenue to finance these projects or the expenditure outlines you have in the budget? Mm. So if it's coming a problem, it means that if they reduce, automatically it's going to affect the budget. So the finance minister has to go back, maybe in the mid-year, to go have a review of the budget that he has done. Mm. So clearly that is the way I find myself. Mm. So I still want to stand my earlier comment right. that I made, that the finance ministry immediately must engage the two unions and the other uh, uh, allied unions to see how they can they can resolve this problem mm. because mm. even union strikes i tell you i tell you when we're in the trouble all right Chrissy, let me bring you well i mean for me my difficulty mainly relates to election promises and how they are fulfilled i mean seven years ago here we had the new patriotic party struggling to come into power and one of the reasons why they wanted to come into power so badly was that we had too many taxes. And they made a promise that rather than generating revenue from resources, from taxation, they would do so on production. Seven years later, their, their, their tax you know, record 
is far worse than the government they came to replace. And, and it is shocking, real shocking. Again, it's important to recognize that there are many people who are playing leading roles in this government who were in the first instance even opposed to the introduction of value-added act tax, completely opposed to it. They get the opportunity to come into power and every budget, every year, they tinker with, with, the, with the VAT levels in order to generate more revenue. Now, sometimes I sit back and I wonder, I mean, the opposition to VAT led to the death of innocent people, including a school child. So, what does their conscience tell them when they keep on doing these things, imposing more VAT, you know, on, on goods and services and so on? I mean, our opposition to VAT led to death. Ahun Honga died. So that alone should, should, should prick our conscience. But it does appear that in a certain kind of politics, principle doesn't matter. The past is completely erased, and we just continue moving on. You know, it's, it's really shocking that we do this. Now, the other thing has to do with, the, with, the, with organized labor and the positions that they take on these issues. And clearly, organized labor is taking a position, according to the Secretary General, in order to alleviate the suffering of pensioners, workers, and, and some categories of citizens as so. well. And I would think that that's a correct position to take. But if you go out there into the public, what you hear is that they always come and threaten and pipe down. You know what I'm they, They've never been able to take their threats forward. Look at this case of the de-unionization of workers in some places and so on. They came up with threats to go on strike. Indeed, the international labor movement actually mobilized support for the Ghana Trade Union Congress and so on. In the end, it just fizzled out. So, in the public domain, there are many, many people who think that this is also one flash in the pan and that is going to fizzle out in no time. You know. Now, here we are. Already, people are struggling to pay their electricity bills. Okay. And it's been argued that we are indebted to the independent power producers in the millions. The independent power producers have been threatened to shut down electricity. And so, so what do we do in these circumstances? Randy, if you look at line losses, in the supply of electricity, it is huge. It is way above industry acceptable. Exactly. You know. So what are we going to do about line losses? What are we going to do about illegal connections and all of that? And Randy, there's a new development. I don't know if you are aware. I'm aware of many, many people whose meters have developed faults. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in one instance, a customer actually went to complain six months ago that the meter has developed a fault. Six months later, the meter has not been repaired. It has not been, you know, replaced. Mm -hmm. Now, all of this contributes to the losses of the company. So if you want to increase tariffs, if you want to put VAT, you know, on, on, on consumption and so on. What are we doing in order to address the shortcomings, the major shortcomings which have become serious, you know, revenue, uh, how do they call it, seepages and so on? How do we do that? That's a challenge to the Public Utilities Regulation Commission. It's a challenge to the Electricity Company of Ghana. And it's a challenge to the policymakers, the Ministry of Energy. Because we know that mm -hmm. the excuse of the huge debts in the power sector, mm -hmm. and so this is to address them and all that. Mm -hmm. We know that those are not true, mm -hmm. and the evidence mm -hmm. evidence are bound to support that. For example, Tesla was set up 
to do the same thing. Yeah. What did we do with Esla? Yeah. Yeah. What did we do? We yeah. spent Esla on things other than dealing with the death situation in the sector. Randy, you're right. We Randy, know. you're absolutely right. There's what no... was Get Fund for? Yes. What are we doing? What what was N NHIL for? What are we doing with it? All the um, funds that we have capped. It's all to bring a lot more into the central fund kitty so that we can spend from there. And, and there's, a, there's a fundamental question that we need to ask. Why have we driven ourselves to a situation <laughs> where total national revenue is not able to meet government commitments? What is happening? Either the resources which are generated huh, are not being spent on, on the priority areas and so on. Or, uh, <laughs> Randy. There's a problem. Okay. There's a clear problem. And the problem is this. Why is revenue we are generating not able to fund, you know, government expenditure? Somebody must 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 look at that. There are those who have looked at that and who have come up with all kinds of suggestions. Large size of government, uh, expenditure, you know, at the presidency over staffing and, and, and so on, you know. But see, we don't need to go far. Mm. If you look at government expenditure mm. and you look at the CAPEX component mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and maybe in the, in, the, in the course of next week I might do that mm. to show uh, the CAPEX spending that we've done maybe in the last 20 years or so. Mm. You know, if you look at that, if you look at goods and services and you look at CAPEX, which are at the bottom, and you see how much we spend on them. As against um, interest payments, for the year 2024, uh, compensation has overtaken interest payments because of the DEP, the mm -hmm. fact that we are not paying our, mm -hmm. our bills really. Mm -hmm. But even if you added amortization, mm -hmm. it will come back to number one. So interest payments, which have never been number one, mm -hmm. has become number one in the last five years or so in this country.